All right, it's week six of the 2024 fantasy football season. So that means it's time for me to give you my kickers tier list for week six, give you my favorite matchups, guys who I think are going to ball out this weekend and guys you absolutely need to bench. Let's go ahead and hop on into it. Okay, a little different than previous weeks. I'm giving you my tiers for most all the kickers coming up this week. I got five tiers for you. We got your stardom every week, no matter what the matchup is. You just got to play these guys and ride with them. Love the matchups. These are my favorite plays this week. Fine to start. You can play these guys, maybe limited ceilings, but they should be a base guy that'll get you some points. If you have to, if you're in a pinch, if you don't want to drop a guy or there isn't anybody available on the waivers, go ahead and play them. Just don't expect too much. And guys, you should absolutely bench. I don't trust these guys this week. I would not play them, but let's go ahead, hop into it. Probably the easiest tier to grade. Okay, easiest one. My stardom every week. If you have these guys, you got to be starting them. Easy. Brandon Aubrey of the Dallas Cowboys. He's kicker number one on the season. You got to play him every week. And Evan McPherson. I know McPherson's had a little bit ups and downs, but this is a great offense. They score a ton of points. He is going to be kicking the ball a lot, and he's been really consistent throughout his entire career. Kaeem Fairbairn of the Texans. I don't care what it is. He's banging 50 yarders left and right. He's now clutch. Game winner on the season last year of 59 yards. Youngway Koo, another money kicker, already had a game winner this year. And Atlanta's offense is starting to come along nicely. They're moving the ball. And all reliable himself, Justin Tucker. Look, Justin struggled from 50-plus, but the Ravens offense scores points. They get into field goal range. They'll kick field goals. You got to ride with my man, Tucker, each and every week. Okay, let's just go through starting off with Colts kicker, Matt Gay, I don't think this is a great matchup for Gay, first and foremost. You know, the offense of the Colts has really struggled this year to do anything, it feels like. I mean, they can't do anything. Tennessee's defense hasn't been incompetent. They're coming off a bye, and we aren't sure what the quarterback situation is. We got Joe Flacco, maybe, but if it's Anthony Richardson, I think Gay is a must bench. But if it's the off chance it's Flacco, I think he's kind of a have to because... You know, Flacco's moved the ball effectively. Tennessee's defense isn't awful, but they're not good. Like, they're okay. So, I'm going to say if you have to start them, you can start Matt Gay. Joe Flacco plays. I feel better about this. If it's Anthony Richardson, I do not feel good about this one at all. Okay, next up, Joey Sly of the Patriots. This is an easy one. You got to bench him. Put him on the bench, man. Rookie quarterback Drake May making his first ever career start against the Houston Texans. Texans defense isn't, you know, anything spectacular, but they're an average defense and they rush the passer really well. New England has zero offensive line. Drake May, I feel like, is going to struggle. This is a disastrous spot for him. I don't think you can play Sly at all this week. My next guy up, Cam Dicker, the kicker. Now, Dicker coming off a bye. You know, the Chargers have Denver. Denver's defense has been really good. I like Dicker a lot. He's been really consistent on the year. He's pretty good from 50-plus. I think he's a fine start. I just think this is a bad matchup. The Chargers are pretty banged up, and the Broncos are humming along nicely. Now, they are at altitude, so that does give you a little boost, more likely, to make those longer field goals. I think he's an okay play this week. I don't love the matchup, but Dicker's too good of a kicker not to put him here in a good spot. Okay, next up, Daniel Carlson of the Vegas Raiders. Look, we don't know who the quarterback's going to be for Vegas this week. Is it Aiden O'Connell? Is it Gardner Minshew? It's probably O'Connell. Pittsburgh coming defense coming off of two like losses, lackluster performances. Maybe they're coming back a little bit to earth, but no Devontae Adams. You still have Brock Bowers, but this offense is really kind of meh. They struggled mightily with Denver. I think Pittsburgh's looking for a big bounce back spot. It is in Vegas. I'm going to say if you have to start Carlson, you can. He is a good kicker. I just don't know what we're going to see out of this Raiders team against a potentially highly, highly motivated Pittsburgh Steelers defensive group looking for a big goose egg on Sunday. Okay, Bears kicker Cairo Santos. I actually love this matchup for Cairo Santos. I think this is a really good spot. We've seen the Bears offense kind of take off the last two weeks. They've been really moving the ball well. Caleb Williams looking like he's coming into his own. And they're running the ball effectively. And in comes a Jacksonville team who's really not good. Like, they're not great on defense. Gave up 30 points to the Colts last weekend. They struggle, you know, all the time to stop teams. The game is in Chicago, so it's, you know, 
The weather could be questionable. Who knows what the wind gusts are going to be blowing in there. But I just love what the Bears offense is doing. I think it's a good matchup. Another bad defense. And if the Jags wires defense does do a good job in the red zone, more than no problem. Eberflus sending out Cairo to knock down some field goals. This one, next one up, Jake Bates, my man from the Lions. I love this matchup. Also, Jake Bates is having a really good season this year as the Lions offense Finally arose two weeks ago against the Seahawks. They had a bye last week. Now they're going to Dallas. Big time spot. Indoors. Prime time slot for them. But the Cowboys defense is bad, man. I know they've looked better the last two weeks. This secondary is banged up. I think the Lions are going to have no problem moving the football. I expect a massively high scoring affair. Now Dan Campbell is a little bit of a wild card. Sometimes go passes on field goals and goes for it when he shouldn't. I don't think he's going to do that this week. I think he's going to be a little bit more conservative because the Cowboys offense has kind of been, you know, looking better, but they've had some issues this year. I think Jake Bates has a huge, huge day. In fact, I believe in Jake Bates so much. Why don't you guys head on over to Underdog, check out Jake Bates, over one and a half field goals against the Cowboys. And when you sign up using promo code the catch, you get your free pick em of the week, Brock Purdy, over half a yard on Thursday night. And don't worry if you're watching this after Thursday, we will also have Joe Burrow over half a total yard. So pair that with Jake Bates. Make some of your money back that I know you've lost because your fantasy season is in the tank. And when you sign up using code the catch, you will get up to a thousand dollars in deposit match, 50% deposit match when you use code the catch sign up and check out the link down below okay my man Blake Groupie from the Saints you know this is just a bad spot for him Derek Carr is going to be out Spencer Rattler making his first first career start against Tampa Bay Tampa Bay's defense isn't the best they've really kind of struggled the last week against the Falcons gave up a ton of yards but it's still a rookie kicker and it's gonna be in New Orleans, in the Dome at least. So I'm going to say if you have to start him, I think he's fine. groupie has been really good on the season. I just think they're going to struggle to move the ball the Saints. The offenses look really bad the last two weeks after that blistering hot start. It just really struggled. And a rookie quarterback making his first career start against a Todd Bowles defense. I know Todd Bowles, say what you want about him. He's going to throw looks at him that he may not be ready for. I think it could be a long day. Similar to Joey Sly, I just think Grooby's a better kicker. It is indoors. They are at home, so you get that distance edge with him. So he may have one or two long kicks, but it could be a long day on offense for them. All right, Packers kicker Braden Everson. I'm going to say he's fine to start this week. You know, the Packers, it looked like he was going to get cut after that disaster against the Vikings. Comes back, has a fine week against the Rams, makes his kick. They're playing Arizona in Green Bay. Arizona's defense is not good. I mean, they have been all over the place this season. They've given up a ton of points. They're up and down. And this Packers offense is starting to hum. Jordan Love now two games under his belt after returning to the injury. We saw Josh Jacobs get into the end zone for the first time. So they're moving the ball well in Green Bay. Now, maybe he'll have a little PTSD kicking back there in Green Bay. That's my only concern. But I think he's fine to start. I think this is a good matchup for the Packers. I think this should be a higher scoring game. So if you got him, just go ahead and play him if you're comfortable with it. All right, Jake the Snake Elliott from the Eagles. I love this matchup, man. I think he's going to have a really good week. They're coming off a bye. They got the Browns at home. Philadelphia fans, they're going to be feeling it. Look, there's been a lot of pressure on this team. Lots of words. Nick Sirianni's feeling the heat, questioning all his fourth down aggressive decisions. Is he going to change his ways? I don't know, but the Browns defense isn't bad. I think they're a good unit, but they're playing more like an average to below average unit because the offense in Cleveland is so, so abysmal. I know the Eagles defense isn't great, but I think they're going to be able to stop this terrible Browns offense. I think the Eagles are going to run this score up. They got to silence some of those doubters out there. This is a great, great spot for Elliott. He hasn't really done a whole lot, which we would expect this year. I think he has a nice, nice day on Sunday. I love this matchup. In fact, I don't think Cleveland's going to be able to stop Philly. Maybe in the red zone, they get some stops there, but I think it's going to be a lot of opportunities for Elliott. So I like him this week. How about another surprise, man? Austin Siebert of your Washington Commanders. Loving this also. Big matchup in the, you know, what is it? The Tidewater. 
Ravens and Commanders. This offense for Washington has been the best and most consistent in football as of the season so far. I mean, they are scoring on like every single possession, it feels like. Jaden Daniels, unbelievable rookie season so far. And the Ravens defense is not good. Got killed last weekend against the Bengals. Gave up 38 points. They were couldn't stop a nosebleed. I expect the Commanders to do the same. Sling the ball all over the place run the football, lots of scoring, lots of opportunities. And Dan Quinn's not going to be too hyper-aggressive, man. He takes his points when he gets them. And Austin Siebert, a guy who didn't even play week one, has emerged as one of the top kickers in the league, it looks like. And as long as this offense keeps humming, I'm loving most of these matchups for Siebert. Okay, Chris Boswell. Uh, Boswell was an amazing start to the season. It's been pretty good all year, but we've seen a dip in his production because the Pittsburgh offense hasn't been great. Now, great matchup like I already talked about, going to Vegas. Vegas isn't great. I think he's fine to start this week. I just don't trust this Pittsburgh offense. You know, we've seen them move the ball okay against good against bad defenses. But I am concerned. Justin Fields, maybe he's going to be limited in what they're able to do. The running game, not so much. And it just kind of has a weird spot. You know, Vegas, you know, when we think they're going to be bad, they're good. And when we think they're going to be awful, you know, they are sometimes awful. But still, I think Boswell, Boswell is a fine start. Most of you have him rostered. So it's not like you want to make any changes for you. Because Pittsburgh still is a team that settles for a lot of field goals. If they do get the ball into scoring range, they kick their field goals. Mike Tomlin knows points are at a premium with his defense balling out most weeks. He needs his points. So Chris Boswell, fine start this week at Las Vegas. Okay, another good start this week. Jason Myers, I think he's fine to start, you know, for Seattle. Tougher matchup on Thursday. Don't love Thursday games all too much. Got the 49ers. For you, So there is potential there. They are at home in Seattle. The weather should be okay. I don't love night games in Seattle. It gets weird. And Myers has missed some kicks this year. We saw the block field goal for a touchdown last week. But Seattle's offense is good and the Niners defense isn't great, man. They've been a real letdown this season. So I expect Geno and the boys to move the football pretty well this Thursday. I think there's opportunities for you there. A lot of you guys, again, Meyer's a guy that's on your roster. If you don't want to get too aggressive and cut somebody, I think he's an okay play this week. Just maybe that ceiling's a little bit limited, but he should be fine for you guys this week. And how about Chase McLaughlin? Chase McLaughlin pay, playing the Saints. Tampa Bay's offense, 10 days off. I think he's, if you have to this week, I know the Saints defense has been pretty good this year. It's a divisional matchup. These games can get gritty. They can get ugly. And it's on the road. I think it's going to be a low scoring affair, actually, after, you know, high scoring showdowns the last few weeks for the Buccaneers offense. People are believing in Baker Mayfield. Again, I have a rule. If you believe in Baker, he's bad. If you don't believe him, he's the best. I think there's a little bit too much belief. I think this is going to be a lower scoring game. Maybe one or two field goals for McLaughlin, an opportunity for you there. But again, another guy on a good offense. If you don't want to cut, if you don't feel like you want to make the roster move there, he's, you know, if you have to play him, play him because... He does have the ultimate chance to being a decent, you know, a decent play. Tyler Bass, another guy. Uh, I'm going to say if you have to with Tyler Bass. I think he's another if you have to guy. Bass has been inconsistent on the season. The Bills offense has been very inconsistent. And they're playing a really, really good Jets defensive unit. Uh, I mean, they were lights out against the Vikings in London. It was not the defense's fault. And they just fired head coach Robert Sala. Expect a very energized performance. And the Jets season hangs in the balance. It, it This is the Jets season. They have to show up. So Buffalo kind of in a bad spot here. They've dropped two in a row. I think they're going to be ultra aggressive. I think McDermott's going to be going for a lot of fourth downs, trying to generate touchdowns and foregoing some field goals. I don't know how much he's loving Bass, but I think this is just a bad matchup for them. And finally, Greg the Leg, same matchup. I'm benching Greg the Leg. This Jets offense is abysmal. They look better in the second half against the Vikings, but the Bills defense isn't great either. I, I just think we're going to get another inspired performance. They've lost two in a row. I think that's going to be another ugly, gritty, low-scoring game between the Jets and the Bills. So I'm not playing Greg the Leg. He's been pretty inconsistent, too, on the year. He missed that game winner against Denver. 
The weather in New York this time of the year, never great. Not going to be doing it for us. But that's going to do it for us today. There are some other guys out there. Matt Prater's a questionable. I would like to avoid that. He's another good kicker. But any questions you have in, on kickers, leave a comment down below. I'll be answering all your questions throughout the week, making sure you make your correct decisions to pick up those fantasy points where you need them. If you haven't already, drop a quick like on this video. Subscribe to the channel. We got all your daily fantasy football content you could ever need. I'm talking about must-starts, running backs, wide receivers, quarterbacks, tight ends for every single game each and every week. Your must-add waiver wires, your late waiver wire ads, guys you should buy low on and target. It's all there for you guys, but make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any of the great content. Again, like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see y'all tomorrow.